Welcome back to the Cracking Paying YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing Leet Code Problem 1123, Lowest Common Ancestor of the Deepest Leaves. Before we get into it, you guys know it's a new year and your new year's resolution should be to like the video and subscribe to the channel. So if you haven't done that already, do it now because it helps me grow. All right, let's get into it. Given the root of a binary tree, return the lowest common ancestor of its deepest leaves. Recall that the node of a binary tree is a leaf if and only if it has no children, the depth of the root of the tree is zero, and the depth of a node D, uh, then the depth of its, sorry, if the depth of a node is D, then the depth of each of its children is D plus one. And we have the lowest common ancestor of uh, set S of nodes is the node A with the largest depth such that every node in S is in the subtree with root A. So let's look at an example because, uh, because you know, the explanation here isn't the greatest. So if we have this tree here, uh, we can see that let's identify our leaves, right? So we have, the, uh, let me move this actually. So we have a leaf here, 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 and here. And the reason these are leaves is because they have no children, right? So let's think about the depth of each of our leaves, right? So the root, it tells us, is depth zero. So this is level zero, which means that this is depth one, this is depth two, and this is depth three. So we can see that the deepest leaves are gonna be seven and four. So now that we've identified the deepest leaves here, we basically just need to find their lowest common ancestor. So as you can see, the lowest common ancestor of both of these is actually just going to be two. So what we wanna do here is relatively simple. We basically just wanna identify our deepest leaves and then find our um, you know, lowest common ancestor from there. So the way that we're gonna do that is we need to recurse down the tree to basically find the deepest leaves. And then what we need to do is just find um, the first node whose children uh, are essentially those two deepest leaves uh, and that will actually be our lowest common ancestor. So in this one it's going to be the two because it is the parent of both seven and four which are both our lowest leaves. So this is going to be a pretty straightforward depth first search problem. We just go down the tree, find the deepest nodes and then find that lowest common ancestor. So this is a little bit of a combination of two problems. One to find the deepest leaves and then two to actually find the lowest common ancestor. But that being said, it's really simple, not too complicated. And now that we have a general idea of how we want to solve it, let's now go to the code editor and type this up. You'll see that it's really not that complex. Okay, I'll see you in the code editor momentarily. Let's now type this up. The first thing that we want to realize is that we can be given a root, which is optional. So basically it can be null. So if it's null, obviously there is no lowest common ancestor. Therefore, we just want to return null, right? So we're going to say if not uh, root, then we just return I can just spell return none, right? All right, now what we need to do is we need to actually figure out what our maximum depth is, and we also need to figure out a candidate um, solution, right? Because we could actually think that something is the lowest common ancestor, but as we traverse the tree, we could actually find nodes that are actually um, deeper. So that candidate no longer is the um, candidate for our um, lowest common ancestor. So it could be the case that we identify a uh, local um, LCA that would work, but actually it's not the global um, you know, maximum for the depth here. So we want two variables here. So we're gonna say self.candidate, and this is gonna be initially none because we haven't identified a candidate for our solution. And we're gonna say that the maximum depth here is just gonna be set to minus one. Now what we wanna do is remember we need to DFS. So let's call our DFS function and we'll actually write it in a second. So we're gonna call root and zero uh, because we're obviously starting from the root and the root's depth is zero, right? So what we wanna do here is uh, at the end of our DFS, we should have identified a candidate. So the DFS function will need to find a candidate. So at the end of our main function here, we just wanna return self.candidate. All right, that's the easy part. Let's actually write the DFS function, which is going to do the majority of the work. So we're gonna say def DFS uh, self. So this is gonna take a node and it's gonna take that node's current depth. So obviously we can get, um, when we try to access a node's left or right child, um, those could actually be null. So if they're null, then we wanna stop our DFS because obviously we can't continue going down. So if our current node, so if not node, um, we're just gonna return minus one. 
um, and you'll see what uh, the return values are here in a second. So now what we need to do is now that we've established our node exists, there's two cases. Either this node is going to be a leaf node, in which case we need to do something, or it's not a leaf node, in which case we want to basically uh, continue our DFS down and also check whether or not that node could actually be the lowest common ancestor. So we're going to say if, oops, if not uh, node.left and not node.right. So basically, if this uh, node is actually a leaf node, then what we want to do is we want to check whether or not this depth that we have currently is actually a new maximum depth because if it is then um, we want to override basically any old candidate we found as the lowest common ancestor because we have now found uh, a deeper node right so we're going to say if the current depth is actually greater than the maximum depth that we've seen so far we want to say that um, our candidate is actually the node itself because a node can actually be the lowest common ancestor of itself so in the case that we just have uh, one node, then that is uh, the lowest common ancestor. In the case that um, there are not more than, I guess, one node uh, at that depth. If it's just one node, then that node is the actual, um, the LCA. So we're gonna set the candidate equal to our current node, and we're gonna update our maximum depth to be equal to whatever our current depth is. And now we just wanna return the depth that we've seen this uh, you know, node at, right? Otherwise, we basically want to get the left depth and the right depth. So we're going to say left depth is going to be self.dfs of node.left. And obviously, the depth increases by one when we go into the child. So we do depth plus one. We're going to do the same thing for the right depth. And you'll see what we do with these in a second. So we're going to call self.dfs on node.right with depth plus one. And now what we want to do here is we want to check this node that we're currently at will be the lowest common ancestor if and only if the depths of its two children are the same and that depth is actually the maximum depth because that's the case if we go back to here um let's close this out this is the case right so if these are the two nodes uh that we were saved you know l depth and r depth from remember these were depth three so if a node receives the same depth from both sides and that depth happens to be the maximum depth, then this node is actually the lowest common ancestor of those two nodes, right? And it makes sense, right? They have to be the same depth, and it also has to be the parent of them. So what we want to do is we want to check for that. So we're going to check uh, if the left depth, uh, left depth equals the right depth, and this equals to self.max depth, then our current node is actually the lowest common ancestor of whatever the um, you know current maximum depth is. Again, it could be the case that we find it here, uh, and this is a temporary solution, but obviously we're gonna traverse the entire tree and we'll actually find that this one is the global uh, best solution, whereas this one could be potentially identified as a, I guess, local solution. Um, which is why we need to traverse the entire tree to basically find everything. And we can't just stop when we found one uh, that satisfies this. So again, if the left depth equals the right depth equals the maximum depth, then we found a potential solution, which is why we're calling them a candidate, not solution, right? So we're going to say a candidate uh, for the answer is just going to be our current node. And then otherwise, we want to return the maximum of the two depths here, right? So we want to return the maximum of the two depths, and that will basically move us, um, you know, back up the stack when we undo our recursion, right? So what we want to do now is actually run this, make sure I haven't made any silly syntax mistakes, and let's see. Okay, accepted, and let us now submit this, and cool, accepted. So uh, let us now talk about the time and space complexity here. So time complexity, we know that we need to basically traverse the entire tree because we need to basically check all of the nodes. Uh, and the reason that we want to do this is because we can't exit early. Um, for example, if we were to identify one as a potential solution, uh, this would be true if, um, you know, there wasn't anything else in the tree. But obviously, this is the, the best solution. So we need to traverse all uh, the entirety of the tree to basically check it. So to do that is going to cost big O of n time because we have to basically visit all of the nodes 
Um, so that is why it's going to be big O of n in the time. And for the space, it's also going to be big O of n. And the reason for this is even though we don't create any variables other than these kind of pointers to store our uh, values here, we do have uh, recursion through an entire binary tree. So because of the recursive frac stack frames, it's going to be big O of n. So this is going to be a uh, recursive stack frames, right? If your interviewer doesn't want to count that, then you could say it's big O of one. Otherwise, it's just going to be a uh, big O of n. So in that case, um, yeah, we essentially have uh, a big O of n space complexity, big O of n time complexity. So relatively straightforward problem. Uh, this question is like the lowest common ancestor of a binary tree, plus, I guess, finding the deepest leaves of a binary tree kind of squished together uh, with, I guess, a little bit of tweaking to make the two algorithms work together. But nothing too complicated. I think I have videos on both of those problems. So if you didn't really understand this one, you can go back to those and kind of build your foundations. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more content like this, then subscribe to the channel. I plan on making a ton of videos this year. So subscribe so you don't miss out on those. Um, like and leave a comment. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.